Thank you for the uh, cold cut tango. There, Minnie Mouse. Anyway, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times. A spectacularly gorgeous morning. Heading, I believe, up to about 85, 87 degrees where I'm heading uh, to get ready for the Monster El Nino here in the Santa Cruz Mountains on Friday morning, October 30th, 2015. And, uh, just one night, I went to Safeway last night to do my Halloween candy rant. And your old, ne your old eco Nazi, when uh, he was there, went, stopped by the meat aisle, got myself some bacon for breakfast, got myself some ham for my lunch today, got myself some sausage for my dinner tonight. So I'm gonna eat literally high on the hog today. And uh, so today is Friday morning. So today is when I bring you my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I get my two favorite environmental newsletters uh, from Center for Biological Diversity and MangaBay.com who go around the world just telling how we are bringing down a planet. Now after the end times headlines from last night, after that rant, there's nothing here that can trump anything in the mainstream media. But while I'm having my Save the Planet cup of coffee, getting ready for my bacon breakfast, my ham lunch, and my sausage dinner, I want to start. We've been kind of ignoring Endangered Earth by, from the Center for Biological Diversity, their uh, lead-off story, bacon, ham, sausage, classified as carcinogenic, meaning cancer-causing, take action. There you go. This is your old eco-Nazi taking action on the cancer-causing bacon, ham, and sausage. I've been saying for years I'm trying to commit suicide by my diet, and so I might as well take a uh, take a planet down with me as I go. Yes. Anyway. Let's see, from my stomach cancer to polar bears on the front lines. It has been more than seven years since polar bears became the first mammal protected under the Endangered Species Act due to global warming. So how are the bears faring today? Well, I don't have time to get into it, you can imagine, though. Okay, here is the newest pesticide lawsuit. Good Lord, the center is headed to court over the EPA's approval of a new fungicide that is highly toxic to fish and aquatic invertebrates. I can't even begin to, to pronounce this, this damn thing. EPA has approved it for use on most crops. Uh, here's the problem. It could kill the planet. Quote, the EPA has a legal, not to mention moral, duty to protect our water and wildlife from pesticides. Instead, though, it has rubber stamped its approval on yet another dangerous new pesticide. Hmm. What is the latest outrageous project in the Arctic? Just when we thought the offshore oil drilling in the Arctic was done and we could breathe easy, news is now resurfaced about the so-called Liberty Project off Alaska's coast. 
where it threatens to light the fuse on a 150 million barrel carbon bomb. This is a, a, a some global planet-eating corporation called Hillcor wants to build a huge artificial island and a five-mile pipeline in churning seas that are prime polar bear habitat. Oh, Jesus. Then they go from the Arctic down to Florida to that black bear hunt, which I parodied last week. It's like 300 black bears gunned down last weekend. They repeat the same story uh, from last week. U.S. climate negotiators must back airplane pollution cuts. The world cannot fight climate change without cutting planet warming pollution from two of the fastest growing sources of greenhouse gas emissions, airplanes and ships. So I'm, I'm proud to uh, know that if you missed my uh, fossil fuel addicts rant, that I did decide to save the planet. I will not be taking an airplane back from uh, California to Texas. Instead, I've decided to keep my gas-sucking truck and drive back to Texas to keep my carbon footprint uh, where it is. And, of course, I'm going to be getting on an airplane and, and flying to St. Croix because it's hard to drive a gas-sucking truck to St. Croix. Here is lawsuit launched for some rare Nevada fish. Good luck. The last chance to vote for 2015's worst eco-villain. Uh, as I say, they're, they're doing more corporations instead of people. We have Exxon, Monsanto, Volkswagen, Senator John McCain, or Clive and Bundy. I am writing in Dilma Rousseff as my vote, although Narendra Modi from India uh, is certainly a, uh, a contender. Anywho, let's go from endangered earth at <clears throat> Over to Manga Bay's newsletter. They need to uh, name their newsletter. We should help them. Okay. So let Manga Bay, we're going to start out. <coughs> I'm sure this is in Asia. I'm just guessing. Clouded leopards traded more than tigers in some illegal wildlife markets. Clouded leopards are being increasingly traded for commercial purposes. And their skins and other body parts are flooding illegal wildlife markets. Uh, so, for once, China is not the number one importer of... Oh, this is live clouded leopards. That would be Japan and the USA are the most active importers of live clouded leopards, while China and Thailand are the two most active exporters. <coughs> and say about the dead ones. And then they get into their Indonesian forest fire roundup rant. It goes on and on about this. I'll just touch on them. Here's Indonesian wildfire disaster threatens virgin forest in Borneo. Again, I need to get my uh, no shit Sherlock uh, button to go along with this. Here is Bali's mountain dwellers govern with ancient palm leaf treatises. Anyway, I won't get into that. I don't know what that's about. All right. I knew I was going to have to get out my bullshit button at least one once today. Reduced 
Amazon deforestation. Reduced Amazon deforestation may be th saving thousands of human lives. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know when Manga Bay is going to stop parroting th this UN planet eating bullshit. I, I, you know, I, I need to sit down. Rhett was just in Austin and I wasn't. Because uh, over and over again, Manga Bay <clears throat> publishes competing research showing what unadulterated horseshit all of this is about reduced Amazon deforestation. And then he goes flip flops right back into uh, spouting out this horseshit. <clears throat> Moving along. Here, as long as we're down there in Brazil, <clears throat> here is smuggling Brazil's wildlife. Brazil possesses extraordinary biodiversity, which makes it a place in which wildlife traffickers thrive, earning $2 billion annually while draining wild lands of tropical birds, fish, turtles, snakes, and, and mammals in unsustainable numbers. While the country does have strong wildlife protection laws, they are very poorly enforced. Yes, yes, and a legal loophole results in animals being captured illegal and laundered by captive breeders. I mentioned this last week about this unadulterated horseshit calling all these illegally trafficked animals. Oh, they were captively bred. Yes. Uh, okay, from Brazil. Gee, more about... Uh, Fires in Southeast Asia. I have no idea where Raja Ampat is somewhere over there. That says one more place. And well, anyway, whoever it is, wherever it is, somewhere in there has been declared a national disaster as Sumatrans suffer. Yes. Here we go. The indigenous community whose forest is their supermarket. Huh, I wonder if they could go buy bacon, ham, and sausage in their supermarket. I mentioned this story of my climate change meltdown roundup looking to the Middle East. <clears throat> Intolerable heat waves likely to hit Persian Gulf by 2100. I think it was actually earlier than that. The study found that under current trends, heat and humidity in many parts of the Middle East could exceed the wet bulb temperature threshold once every 10 to 20 years. At these severe temperatures, the human body simply will not be able to cool down. Okay, now, after all of these stories about how deforestation is decreasing, uh, they, we, we get some we get some uh, honest news here. And this is just looking at forest inside of protected, federally protected forest reserves and national parks and all of this horseshit. Uh, world's protected forests lost 3% of their trees in the past 13 years. So 19% of the world's forests are supposedly protected. 
Yes. Uh... In some areas, researchers found protected status appeared to offer no actual protection when it came to deforestation. Do you think so? Here we go. I think I mentioned this one already in my maybe my climate meltdown rant. Catholic bishops ask for binding transformative climate treaty. Yes, uh, and this is they are asking the United Nations to adopt a fair transformational and legally binding agreement that recognizes the need to live in harmony with nature and guarantee the fulfillment of human rights. Oh, and to develop new models of development and lifestyles that are climate compatible while bringing people out of poverty. You, you know, there's so many levels of bullshit in that, uh, namely the last one, exactly developing lifestyles that are climate compatible while bringing people out of poverty bringing pe people out of poverty is what makes their lifestyles incompatible with climate protection. I guess the, uh, the Vatican bishops failing to grasp this little fact. More stories on Indonesian forest fires. What is PepsiCo up to? PepsiCo's palm oil pledge should not exempt Indo food. Pepsi PepsiCo has committed to purge its palm oil supply chain of deforestation. But its commitment does not apply to its joint venture partners. Yes, to, to put it mildly, and the Rainforest Action Network campaigning for the loophole to be plugged up yeah, by, by making palm oil illegal on this planet. Jesus. Here, I just mentioned this one in the, uh, in the End Times headlines last night. Half of Africa's lion population could disappear in the next 20 years. Okay, since 1990, the lion population has declined sharply, and some populations have already gone extinct. And under current levels of conservation efforts, 50% are likely to be wiped out over the next two decades uh, and 100 percent over between now and 2100 of course. Here is what's going on with India's purple frogs eaten to extinction. Eaten to extinction. This is the, these, the, these little planet nibblers, for people who don't understand the difference between uh, planet nibbling and planet eating, these are these Indians who are eating the tadpoles, not the frogs. Tadpole soup sending the uh, Indian purple frog into extinction. More stories on Indonesian forest fires. Here is the long-beaked echidna. This little egg-laying thing down there in uh, Australia. Question being, 
can we save these can we save the Earth's oldest living mammal? The answer to that question is no, we cannot save the Earth's oldest living mammal. Yes, who are now restricted to its last holdout, its last holdout in New Guinea's most remote, rugged mountains. Good luck. Okay. You know climate change threatens the planet, but your bank account? Yes, yes, yep. I would say that's one of the many casualties. Gee, broken promises. Communities on Philippine Island take on the palm oil companies. In 2002, the Philippine government decided to expand palm oil cultivation in the islands to fulfill the country's rapidly growing domestic consumption. There you go. And uh, we know where that's going. Here is the newest surprising threat to monarch butterfly survival, tropical milkweed. I mentioned this horseshit story about the California drought saving the, uh, the uh, monarch butterflies because all of these Californians planting milkweed. Well, it, it ends up that a lot of the milkweed they're planting isn't the native California milkweed. They're planting milkweed from Brazil or somewhere like that and it's killing the monarchs. So they think they're planting milkweed to save the monarchs and in fact they're killing the monarchs by planting a, 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 an invasive species of milkweed. You just can't win. Here we go. I love this story from the uh, from these uh, wildfires in Indonesia, the Islamic Council sees the haze as a warning from God. Uh, that is exactly. I here's Hamon Little Tail agreeing with the Islamic Council. Okay, let's see, uh, well we, we do, we have found an, a new monkey species in Indonesia. I think I might have mentioned this before. We do have a brand new species of monkey being discovered in Indonesia and take a wild guess where it was discovered. It was discovered in a market being, uh, you know, being sold for bushmeat. There you go. So it was being eaten before it was discovered. Yes, here we go. Peruvian amphibians heading into oblivion. Here is, so uh, what's going right here? And uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's just wind up right here in the good old U.S. of A. Let's wind up here where looking at uh, the global corporatocracy, the planet-eating global corporatocracy having the U.S. judicial system in its, in its pocket. U.S. judge accepts plea deal from lumber liquidators over Lacey Act violations. A U.S. judge has accepted a plea deal in which lumber liquidators agrees to pay more than $13 million in fines and penalties for violating the Lacey Act, which prohibits the trade of illegal timber. Uh, and they have promised lumber liquidators 
in their plea deal so they don't have to really, uh, so, some, so heads don't really roll. L Lumber Liquidators is promising the judge that the Planity Corporation will quote, will quote, radically alter the way the company sources its wood products. Lumber liquidators, planet liquidators, radically altering the way they eat a planet. And uh, speaking of eating, looking at uh, this bacon on the floor is making me hungry, so I gotta get in there and eat a pan full of bacon for breakfast, and while it's frying, I'm going to be making a ham sandwich for lunch, but this is your old carnivorous eco-Nazi wrapping up another ecological meltdown roundup rant and heading out into an 87 degree uh, October 30th day in the Redwoods to help this old couple prepare for a Godzilla El Nino. So this is me and Minnie Mouse for October 30th, 2015.